Crusades had long become a way of life in Europe. They had been going on for over a hundred years when Francis decided to die a martyr's death in the land of our Savior's birth. He set out three times for the Holy Land, but was blocked mm. twice, once by conditions and the other by his own bad health. Finally, in 1220, he forged ahead. But the Lord had different ideas for Francis. He guided Francis and a companion through the battle lines to the Sultan of the Saracens. They were caught by the Arabs, beaten and put in chains. Then they were brought before the Sultan. When asked why they had come, Francis shared his love of the gospel and our Lord Jesus. He was so simple, so sincere, the Sultan was captivated by him. Francis was going after mass conversion. He offered to walk through burning coals with the Sultan's priest if the Sultan agreed that he and his people would convert. The Sultan's priests were not too happy with the idea of walking on ho hot coals. In fact, they disappeared as soon as Francis made the suggestion. The Sultan is said to have told Francis that he would convert, but if he were to, both he and Francis would be killed. Francis loved all that God had created. One day a little boy approached him. Francis asked him where he was going with the doves in the cage. The little boy replied he and his mother had little to eat, so his mother was sending him into town to sell his turtle doves. Francis took what little alms he had gathered by begging and offered it to the little person, saying, Good youth, I pray you give them to me, so that these birds were so chaste and humble, and faithful souls will not fall into the hands of cruel men who would slay them. Francis, upon receiving them from the young boy, took them into his arms and said, O oh, sweet, simple, innocent, chaste turtle doves, why do you let yourselves be taken? Now I desire to save you from death and to make nests for you so that you can bring forth fruit and multiply according to the commandments of our Creator. Having done so, Francis turned to the youth and told him that one day he would be a friar and serve Jesus with all his heart. This was to become a prophecy, as the youth did become a friar and live a life of great sanctity in the Franciscan order. Francis preached more with the gospel which he lived than with what he said audibly, attracting nobles and commoners alike to give up all of the world's treasures and comforts for the jewels Francis had discovered, the graces of God. Homeless, begging for crusts of bread which had been discarded, Francis and his friars settled in a couple of huts. The places were so cramped they could hardly sit or lie down to sleep. One day, a peasant came along with his donkey and claimed the huts for himself and his donkey. Fearing the brothers would protest, the man shoved his donkey into the hut, saying, In with you. This place is just right for us. Now Francis was not too happy with the circumstances, for the man had disturbed the brothers who had been deep in prayer. So he turned to his friars and said, Dear brothers, I know that God has not called me to entertain a donkey and live in the company of men, but to show the way of salvation by preaching and wise counsel. Then giving praise and thanksgiving for all the Lord had given them, Francis and his brothers left the huts to the man and his mule. One day Francis was being tormented by temptations of the flesh. Visions of women in all forms of lewd behavior were torturing him, trying to tempt him to commit sin. Nothing he did could block these images from his mind. Crying out to God his Savior, he fled to the rose garden and threw himself onto the roses, rolling in the bushes, the thorns piercing and entering his frail body. The temptation ceased, and till today, the roses on these bushes have no thorns. <laughs> 